Okay, so we're going to do three reactions in one here because they all stem from the same reaction. The Wolf rearrangement is the main reaction that I want to discuss, but it's used in the iron isert homologation, which lets you take a carboxylic acid and exchange, extend the chain length by one, making a homolog. Or you can use near use the same reaction, slightly different conditions to do the Nierenstein reaction, which lets you take a carboxylic acid chloride and make an alpha halo carbonyl or an alpha halo ketone. So Let's look at this reaction, and I'm going to do the reaction with phenylacetic acid chloride. So this molecule here, and we're going to treat it with diazomethane. So diazomethane is both highly toxic and highly explosive, and you can see why it might be readily decomposed. It's got this nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond in this resonance form. You can, of course, resonate the negative charge onto the other nitrogen, but nonetheless, it can easily decompose to give you nitrogen gas. It's toxic because it will easily methylate in an acidic environment, and we'll see why that happens. Um, but it'll easy it's very good for making methyl esters, but it'll methylate an awful lot of different things, including your proteins and DNA inside the body if it gets in there. So it's highly carcinogenic. But in this case, assuming we're going to do the reaction, it's going to act as a nucleophile, and it's going to attack our carbonyl carbon, and it's going to form a tetrahedral intermediate. So, abbreviating the benzene ring to a pH, we're going to redraw these things out, everything exactly as it was, except what we've moved, nitrogen with a positive charge, this carbon still has two hydrogens on it, we've made this bond, so the negative charge is gone from this carbon because it's now sharing that pair of electrons, and the chlorine is still there, and this second bond, we've put those two electrons up onto the oxygen. So, as usual, we've got our tetrahedral intermediate, and then we can reform our carbon-oxygen double bond and kick out our leaving group, and that's a really familiar bit of chemistry, hopefully. So now we have a particular set of functional groups, that we can imagine are going to do interesting chemistry. So we have our carbonyl, and on the alpha carbon we have a diazonium. Or at the moment we have a diazonium. And this diazonium here is one of the best leaving groups you're going to find. Positive charge on the nitrogen would love to take that pair of electrons away, and when it does, it's going to produce nitrogen gas. So that's definitely irreversible. The nitrogen gas isn't coming back. Really good leaving group. So. Under these conditions, it'll do the Nierenstein reaction. Under these conditions, if we leave the chloride in there, the chloride will come along and it will attack and it will kick out nitrogen gas. And just as promised, what we'll have, we started off with an acid chloride, and now on this carbon here, we've added in a carbon, so we've ma made an alpha halo ketone. But Maybe that's not what we want to happen. Maybe we want to do the Wolf rearrangement, because that will allow us to do the iron isert homologation either. So that is one possibility. But let me take this structure here and redraw it down here. So the other possibility is that you conduct this reaction in the presence of a mild non-nucleophilic base. And your mild non-nucleophilic base might be something like triethylamine, nitrogen, three alkyl groups coming out of it. Not a very good nucleophile, but a mild base, and it will happily deprotonate that hydrogen there. And when it does that, what we have is our diazo group and the carbon next to the ketone. So this is a neutral molecule now. This molecule back here was positively charged, but we've now got our neutral molecule back again. Well, what can possibly happen? Yes, this can resonate. We can make the double bond and put the nitrogen, negative charge in the nitrogen. But if you heat this up at all, it will start to decompose. And when it does decompose, this nitrogen is going to want to leave with that pair of electrons. Because it, when it does, we think about that nitrogen and draw it everything else exactly as it was. 
this has a negative charge and this nitrogen had a bond here, had a positive charge, has taken those two electrons. So we've made nitrogen gas and this carbon now should have a positive charge because it's now given up a pair of electrons that it was sharing. But it also has a negative charge. So what's actually going on here? Well, this is a carbene. And what we have here is we have a carbon that is overall neutral, but it only has six electrons in its outer shell. It's short two electrons. And that is a very reactive species. So in some instances, what will happen is that the carbenes, if you make uh, carbenes from uh, chloroform, you can put react chloroform with the base and make dichlorocarbene, it'll react with double bonds, various different reactions. But in this case, the molecule can just rearrange to get rid of that carbene to fill up the empty orbital. And the way it's going to do that is that this pair of electrons is going to migrate from the carbon-carbon bond here to make a new carbon-carbon bond over here. And this pair of electrons, that is the negative charge, the lone pair, is going to make a new carbon-carbon bond here so that the carbon in the middle has lost a bond but it has gained a bond and this carbon now has two new bonds. Well, let's draw out the products of that. Made my own mistake. Let's draw out the products of that so everything exactly as it was except for the bonds that we moved. That bond is gone. That's still there. That's still there. That hydrogen is still there and our nitrogen gas is long gone. And what did we do? We took this pair of electrons that was here and we made a new carbon-carbon bond and we took the pair of electrons that was the lone pair on, or the, uh, on the carbon and we made a new carbon-carbon double bond. So we've made a ketene. Let me draw that out with more sensible bond angles. We know that they are going to have to be in line, they're going to have to be uh, straight or linear if you think about the orbitals that are overlapping. So there's a carbon in there and we've made our ketene. And usually if you do this reaction you can do various different things with this reaction um, and make your ketene react to do different things. But if we include water Our water can attack and ultimately what we will generate without worrying about the mechanism right now is we will generate our carboxylic acid. So essentially water is added across this double bond but it can attack, uh, break the carbon oxygen double bond and then uh, reform the carbon oxygen double bond and this can be protonated as that bond is broken. So remake our carboxylic acid except now if we look at the molecule we finish up with this molecule here there are one two three carbons and here there are only one two carbons so we've made a homolog we've made it one carbon longer. Okay if you have any questions uh, post them below or email me or any of the usual ways of getting in touch. That's all for now. Thanks. One last thing I didn't really explain why diazomethane, so this is diazomethane, is a good methylating agent for, particularly for esters, um, but generally will act as a methylating agent in acidic conditions. So if we look at the resonance structure, it actually doesn't give us any clues. So that's that resonance happening there. It doesn't actually give us clues as to why it would be a good methylating agent. But this is reasonably basic. Carbon with a negative charge on it. Okay, it's not your regular carbon with a negative charge on it because it's attached to a nitrogen with a positive charge on it. Nonetheless, reasonably basic. So, if we take our diazomethane, and we put it in with a carboxylic acid. What's going to happen? Well, carboxylic acid, weak acid, reasonable base. This is just going to take proton and what do we have now? Well, we have, and maybe you noticed this during the Nierenstein reaction, maybe you didn't, but we have a methyl group 
with an incredibly good leaving group attached to it. Not only that, but in this case we've now also made our carboxylate, which is usually a pretty terrible nucleophile. But there's an ionic attraction between these two, these two things, because this is a net positive charge, net negative charge, so they are going to be ionically attracted to each other. Exceptionally good leaving group, kind of a terrible nucleophile, absolutely no steric hindrance here from these tri three hydrogens, so it's just going to do an SN2 reaction and net result we make nitrogen gas because that pair of electrons was given there and moving those hydrogens about a little bit we have a methyl ester but equally well if you make this uh, if you protonate your diazo methane then it will act as a methylating agent on all sorts of things and inside uh, biological systems or that kind of thing it's capable of methylating pretty much indiscriminately resulting in part of its toxic effects.